this video we're going to be looking a little bit more in depth as to how we can use visibility graphics and um, conditional formatting to have our stud wall operate proper or a, in a more advanced and logical way. Now both these walls look exactly the same and for the most part they are but if we go to level one and we take this wall and we shrink it we'll get an error. If we go to this wall and we shrink it you'll notice that it automatically knows what to do when we shrink it past a certain point. Now this is really handy when you're just going through quickly and you want to get some general idea, a general idea of what um, of, of calculations and not have to worry about okay I gotta switch from this wall to this wall this one is this one keeps erroring out I can't figure out what's wrong now the only way that I can think about to explain this because some of the conditions that you have to create are so complicated um, the only way that I could think to do this is to actually go to this family which is the regular stud family and kind of walk through the other one that I created here and kind of walk through the methodology and kind of explain what my thought process it was on each of these um, each of these conditional formats that I created in order to get it to work properly and then instead of having to take time and have you watch me type in all of this, I'm just going to copy and paste it into our, uh, into our new project. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do some general setup. So you'll notice that I have some other, uh, uh, other parameters in here, like uh, I had to add uh, two new parameters for the first stud offset and the stud spacing offset. I had to add um, a stud visibility uh, parameter. I had to add an array distance parameter. Um, uh, and I also had to uh, I had to make sure that this one here, this number one, is always set to one. Uh, and I'll explain why uh, a little bit later. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, set up our some of our basic uh, parameters that are missing. So the first thing we're going to do is that. So we're going to go to here. We're going to add add a new parameter. We're going to call it just stud thickness. Uh, this parameter isn't really that necessary, but uh, it makes your calculations much smarter. Uh, down the road instead of having to put in 1 and 5 eighths, uh, you can just associate this to a parameter which we're going to be using. So we're going to create an instance. Sorry, that's going to be a type. Uh, we're gonna, it's going to be a length parameter and it's going to be under construction. And then we're just going to make this 1 and 5 eighths inch. That's it, one done. We're going to create another new parameter. We're going to call it array distance. This one is actually an instance parameter. Uh, it's also a length, and I put it under other because uh, the reason, the only reason why I created this parameter is to simplify the calculation that you have to make in order to figure out when to turn on and off the internal studs and when to turn on the filler stud. And I'll explain that a little bit later. So that's our that's the calculation right there. Our calculation, the parameter right there. And then we're going to add those other two new parameters, which is first stud offset, which is going to also be an instance. We'll put it under dimensions. And then we're going to create another one, and we're going to call this one stud spacing offset instance, also a length, also under.
dimensions. So we're going to just organize this real quick. Sorry, I like to have it a little bit more organized when I'm looking through my parameters. Uh, it makes it easier to find stuff. Um, so we have our two parameters here. Uh, we have our parameter down here. And we also have our stud thickness. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our array distance. So we're going to sit OK. We're going to go back to... here. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and we're going to just, I'm just going to copy paste this and then I'm going to explain it. Okay, so basically what we're trying to figure out here is we're trying to figure out at what distance from the start to the very end um, do our does our stud array go? So basically, what we're saying is we need to know the distance of the first stud plus the stud spacing. So it's only going to give us the one stud spacing, which we have up here, plus the stud thickness plus the stud thickness divided by two. Now the reason why we have to add this in is because our stud spacing only goes to the center of the stud which means we need to account for the extra half of stud that will be hanging over the end and then we also need to account for the thickness of the end stud as well because we don't want when we pull our um, our wall back we don't want it to show the studs overlaying or overlapping on the end we want to say okay the second that this stud gets to here we eliminate that extra stud so that's how this this that's what this is basically trying to calculate It's trying to calculate the far extents to the very last edge of the arrayed stud okay um, and because of this we're actually going to have to include one extra stud every time because the only way part of the reason why that the panel is is erroring out is because it it can't calculate no a, zero as an array number and th that's something that's kind of annoying about Revit because well, why can't you have zero it can right but uh, for some reason it has to have at least one so that's why we're gonna have one here so it's basically what we're saying is we're round we're telling this to round up but in a much simpler way by just giving it one and when you extend the, the panel past uh, one stud you can always just subtract it to make it zero. It's just when you go below a certain number of array you have to make sure that you have one, at least one stud. And when we t turn the visibility on and off like you saw in the last video you can actually when you hide the internal studs it's not going to matter whether there's one or there's zero or there's five or there's fifteen or two hundred. So that's just a little side note as to why we have to have that one there. So the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to uh, add the parameter for our internal stud family. Actually, sorry, we're going to do this, do these first, these two. So, so I'm going to hit OK. I'm just going to go back to this one. I'll do the same thing I did last time, which is I'll just copy this text over. We're actually going to do the stud spacing first. It's a little more complicated. We're going to go to stud space offset. I'm going to paste it in. I noticed I didn't have the eye here. So I'm just going to stretch this out so you can see it but a little easier. So this is where the array distance comes into factor. So 
if so for anyone who's used conditional formatting uh, if statements are pretty um, they can get pretty complex if you really want to um, now there's simple if statements which we're going to use uh, but this one is a much more complicated one that uses or and um, for anyone who's coded before the way the or statement is used in Revit is a little different from the way that it's used in JavaScript for instance usually you would just say if this or this um, then do this and this versus the way that Revit does it is you say if and then you say or then you say one condition, comma, then another condition. Instead of having like just saying this condition or this condition, or just saying less than and putting an equal sign beside it, which is usually standard inside of JavaScript. Um, so that's how you would have to say, because the way that we want to calculate this is we want to say if the panel length is less than the array distance, which is the full length of the array or if the panel length is equal to the array distance then we want it to be one inch if not then we want it to pull our stud spacing parameter now I'll, I'll explain a little later why we're using one inch um, but for the most part it's just an indicator uh, for when we use a visibility graphic to uh, turn on and off the internal studs so we're just going to click out of that and then we're going to do the same thing for the first stud we're just going to copy that over first stud we're going to paste it in so this one uh, is basically running off of this so this is really driving most of what's going to happen within this uh, stud family so basically what this is saying is if stud spacing is equal to one inch which is our identifier here uh, then make it two inches. I just picked two inches because it's a little makes it a little more uh, delineated, just in case we need to reference just the first stud. Otherwise, so if yes, then two inches. If not, then use first stud, which is our number here. And then we're just going to select out of that. And you'll notice that they both default to 16 inches because that's just what is inside the project right now. So we'll hit OK. Uh, and then right after we hit OK, we're going to get our parameters for the visibility. So we're going to go back to here. We're going to get our first parameter, which is for the internal stud. To our internal studs here, and then we'll just hit Control V. Uh, and I just realized that I forgot to add a parameter in, so we're just going. I'm just going to add that in real quick. So we're going to go to a new parameter. We're going to create one called another visibility parameter called Stud Visibility. This will also be an instance. It will be a yes, no parameter. And we'll go under visibility. And then I'll explain this one in a minute. We have to create another parameter that is not stud visibility, unfortunately. Will also be an instance. Will be a yes, no parameter. Visibility. Okay. So the reason why we have to create this parameter and I'm just gonna move this up move this down 
So the reason why we have to create this parameter is we need to be able to identify what is not on and what is on. So the way that I'm going to be using this um, this visibility graphic is I'm going to be using it as almost like a master switch. Let's say, for instance, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be telling the filler stud that it should always be off while this is always on. But what if we want both to be off at the same time? What if we just want the two end studs? Right, we don't get that option because both of these will be driven by these two parameters here. And I'll explain that in a little bit more detail after I copy the code over and you can see how it works. So um, the way that the reason and I'll explain why we have to create this one as well so I'm just gonna type this in first so you can understand uh, what I'm doing here so so this is a basic uh, boolean which is if you know coding then you know that a boolean is based off of uh, a condition and then you have to create a yes and a no or true and a false uh, Revit doesn't have true or false as conditional um, conditional items so what you have to do is you have to calculate a true and a false so basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to create an opposite of what stud visibility is which is why I named it not stud visibility um, so we're saying if stud visibility meaning if yes so this is carrying a yes because this is on then carry a false statement because one is not greater than two uh, and then if false then carry this which is a yes so if we click out of it, you'll see that it automatically, so it'll gray it out saying that this is calculating something, and then it will automatically uncheck. If you check that, it'll uncheck. You'll see, see now you can see how this is operating as almost like a master switch. So basically what I did is I created on while also creating off. Now I'm going to take that parameter that I had before, I'm going to paste this in. I'll explain it in a second here. Just going to stretch it so you can read the whole thing. So I used another OR statement here, and the reason I did that is because we have to say if stud spacing offset equals one inch, which is our identifier from up here, or not stud visibility, which means off, then return a value of false, otherwise, return a value of true. So basically, if I switch this, it's going to turn it off, right? Because it's going to effectively turn this on, which means that if it's this, then it's false. So basically what you're saying is if either of these are false, then I need to turn off. Or, right, yes. Sorry, it's pretty confusing myself <laughs> sometimes. So I'm just going to turn that back on for now. And then I'm going to go back to my other one and I'm going to copy over the parameter for the filler stud and I'll explain that one. It's pretty simple. So now we're going to, I'm just going to paste this in here real quick. So this one is basically the same. Internal, oh, there's a, I put an S in the other one. In this one, sorry. So, sorry, I'm just going to stretch this real quick so you can see. So effectively what we did here is we did so we created an, an on switch 
and then we created an off switch from that and then we basically did the same thing with this one so we said that we need whenever this one's on this one is always off whenever and this one will turn on when this one is off or unless this one is on so if I unclick this it'll turn both off you might have to rewatch that a couple times if you if you're not familiar with this kind of conditional formatting but if I turn this on then it'll turn this one back on now I'm just gonna hit OK real quick here and I'm going to shrink my wall down to there's usually a dimension here I'm just gonna shrink my wall down here oh, hang on one thing to uh, to remember I'm just gonna go to the exterior uh, make sure that you lock these because you'll get what you just saw there which is something it doesn't make sense it just because it for some reason it when it while well, it's in the family it doesn't recognize that this is locked to here uh, so we're just gonna shrink this so if we go to the exterior side again you can see that it's less it's less than two feet now and we're not erroring out now it's not telling us that anything's wrong so if we go to our family here you can see that what it's doing is now that this is one so basically what happened is the stud spacing so one of these conditions became true right so the panel length is less than the array distance, which is down here, which is the first stud and stud spacing plus this little calculation here, which means that now the stud spacing is one inch. So this is what I meant by all of the data is being fed from this one calculation. So this, this one inch feeds to this one, which now is telling it to be two inches. And now that this is one inch is also going down to here feeding into this saying this is now false and because this one is false this one is now true now if i flip this off you'll see that i can turn both off still so it still works uh, so those are still defaulted to off uh, these are both locked uh, and it looks like we're probably ready to test it out inside the actual project. I think we got everything we needed here. So we're going to hit apply. OK. Stretch this out. Then we're going to just save real quick. And we're going to load this into the project. We're going to hit override values. Gonna take a minute. Now we're gonna test it out. We're gonna go to level one. We're gonna stretch it down to to here. erroring out because it is it does not have this additional stud so this is what I was talking about so what what ends up happening is if it's below a certain distance it it gets tricked it doesn't understand what's happening anymore so we're gonna add that stud in then we're gonna shrink it down to two feet where we were erroring out before so we'll just do a quick test we'll do so this is a good way to do an error check is go to down to two feet, then go down to one foot eleven. So if it's not working, chances are there's something else in here that's not right.
Okay, so I think I found out what was wrong with it is when we created these parameters here, these two parameters here, we actually need to tell them that we need them to be, I'm just going to make this 16 inches real quick. We need to reassign these to our dimensions in our project, which we didn't do. So I'm just going to select first stud here. I'm going to change this to first stud offset, and I'm going to change the stud spacing to stud spacing offset. Now the reason we want to do that is we don't want it to be using the one foot four inches. We want it to be flexible, like the calculation we used here. We we want it to be telling these this array to be one inch uh, when it's off. Otherwise, we'll get the error that we just we kept seeing, which was um, which was the sorry, it's just taking a second to load which was uh, once it gets to a certain distance it it can't figure out I can't figure out what's wrong with it so we'll go back we'll do our test again so we'll go to two feet we'll go to one foot eleven looks like it works we'll go down to one foot six looks like it works one foot two Good, good. So everything works so far. So one note that I would like to add to this is, for some reason, um, once it gets to the point where it's the distance of the first stud, you actually have to change the number of the first stud down to something lower than 16 inches, unfortunately. So the way that I kind of like to go through it is I like to draw my walls. I like to draw them in at with eight inches, and then you can go through and select all the walls, filter, find the panel, and then you can change this parameter to 16 inches if you need to. Um, I don't know why that I don't know why that can't work inside of Revit. I've tried every I've tried every uh, calculation that I possibly could to get it to work, but for some reason it still recognizes it at 16 inches. You have to manually do this one, unfortunately. So, because you'll see, even if I go to 16 inches here, see how it's recognizing it as 2 inches? Although, even though it's recogni recognizing it as 2 inches, it still will error out here and that's just an error within Revit that you can't fix it there's nothing there's nothing wrong with the calculation because it's it's less than it's less than the number that it's erroring out at, at which doesn't make sense so um, so let's test out our uh, visibility graphic here so we'll go to stud visibility We'll turn it off just to see if it works. So it turned off the filler panel. We'll drag it out. And you'll see that it won't add any studs at all, actually. It'll hide all of them. We'll select our panel again. We'll turn on the stud visibility just to see if that works. Looks like everything works. Uh, we'll make sure that our flip toggles work. So those work. Uh, we'll also test our left side stud so that works too we don't need to add a right one because there's already one there okay and then the one last thing that we're going to do is we're going to test our schedule so we'll just create another one here We'll do what we did last time. We'll just add count description. Part number is good enough. Just minimize this. 
so you'll actually see it's probably it's calculating both of these actually at the same time because you'll see that there's four tracks here so we'll just do a test shrink this window real quick so do a test drink this in so you'll see it's removing studs do another test we'll select this and we'll turn off the stud visibility got rid of all of them we'll get rid of left stud got rid of all of them you can do the same thing with the left stud and the right stud if you want to if you want to create add this stud visibility graphic as like a master control for everything um, not really suggested I don't think it's really that necessary but it's up to you this is pretty flexible even though uh, there is the one error that I can't seem to figure out uh, I would if any of you have suggestions on how to fix it uh, please leave a comment let me know uh, I'd love to add it into this uh, but uh, otherwise like subscribe uh, and uh, leave a comment and um, also just so you know I'm gonna be adding uh, this to my Gumroad as uh, a new version to what I had before so uh, check that out if you guys just want what I made otherwise just follow the tutorials and you can have exactly what I have here so uh, thanks again and I'll see you in the next video